Okay, I think I fixed it. Okay. Are we ready to go then? I think. All right. If we have too many more problems with this live stream, you guys can always catch the video on uh, YouTube, youtube.com, youtube.com slash happy little landscapes. And that'll take you to the YouTube video that we can put out in a couple days, okay? So I'm taking the crimson, the blue, the black, gotten it right down here, kind of wiggled it onto our one inch Bob Ross brush. And then we're gonna come up here and just kind of decide where our clouds live, right? Let's see, we can do, all we're gonna do is just kind of bounce in these shapes of these clouds that we want in here. Maybe we'll put some over here, far off a little bit. They don't have to connect. You don't have to do anything really. And we're just kind of touching the canvas, just like this, different places, depositing some of it thicker in some areas, thinner in other areas, right? Just literally making a mess, because that's what we do with Happy Little Landscapes. We make a mess, right? Wash that brush off. Don't need to get it all the way off. Sort of clean. We're going to come back up here and just start making these little circles back and forth. Right up here on the canvas, everybody, on Easter Sunday. Thanks for sticking with us through all these technical issues. Making these little circles like this, right? So you can see through the cloud. You can see some of the shadows, some of the sky color behind it. And then for these farther <laughs> off ones, just literally going to swipe back, back and forth. forth. Just like okay. that, so they become this nice, soft. We're not going to blend them all the way out. It will be the same color as the sky, obviously. Just going to swipe them back and forth like that. And now we have these real messy, sort of shadowy looking clouds. So we're going to come back in with our titanium white, right? Pull it out flat, just like that. Grab a little bit on the end of our knife like this. And then just come up and just start dropping it in the areas where you think your cloud would have some lighter color. Right? Yours doesn't have to look like mine. Of course. You'll never be able to get it exactly the same as mine. You know, just from the the amount of paint that we pick up on the knife or how much you put the shadows down. It's never going to be exactly the same, so don't expect it to be. Cover up all those shadows, remember. Want to save the shadows, man. Save the whales and the shadows at the same time. Come back again with our one-inch brush and just very ever so lightly, right, just touch. Little tiny circles, just touching. All we're doing is just kind of disturbing what that paint looks like. You want to leave those darker areas in there, have a little bit of white, a little bit of dark. All we're doing is just sort of disturbing it. We don't want to blend it out and we don't want to blend it so much that it covers over all of our shadows. Again, with this one back here, just literally swipe it, right? And we're going to come up straight up from the bottom to the top, just like so, come to the side, right? That's just gonna soften those clouds, kind of mush them down onto the canvas, and then you get this real soft, far away little section of clouds. And the more and more you swipe at them, the more they will disappear. And they'll end up just blending in with the rest of the painting, okay? Let's see what that looks. Looks really neat, actually. I like that. Okay, we're going to come in, we're going to make up our, our deserty mountains like that picture you saw on the live event in Facebook. We're going to take some of our brown, a little bit of our white, and just start mixing those up together. And it's going to turn into this sort of marbled brownish color, right? Let's scrape some of that up, and we're going to decide where our mountains sort of live in this painting. So... Let's say we got one over here. And remember, with your mountains, they don't always have to look like a, you know, a pyramid at the top. You don't want them to look like that. They don't need to be pointy at the top. Give them some rounded edges, especially out here in the desert. The wind blows so much all the time. It just sort of shapes these mountains a little bit differently. They're not very, very peaky. Don't have a whole lot of sharpness to the top of them. Very round. You can even make them flat if you want. Doesn't matter. Give them a 
come up here. Just have these different shapes, right? All we're worried about is what the top looks like. We don't care about what it looks like down here around the bottom. Do not care what it looks like down there. We're going to come down, we're going to leave some of that lighter area underneath our, our mountains there, right? So we've still got that little bit of yellow. We've got the far away cloud back there. We're going to drop it in like that and take a little bit of that dark brown in different places, right? Just so when we blend it out, we've got some differences in color. We'll take our one inch brush, Come down here, little bumps, little humps. And just very lightly, you know, the, the more you come down to the bottom, the less you're touching, right? You're kind of pulling it away from the canvas so you're not dragging it too far down. And it's going to blend in with these reds and pinks that are down in here. And the reason we put these darker colors in is so you'll have these differences in color, which will tell you where you can put your shadows, where you can put your highlights, different stuff like that. And all we're really worried about is what the top line looks like. Everything else you can cover. All right, drag it down, drag it down. A little bit of that brown over here on the side, just so the buyer can see it. If you guys want to see what it looks like on the side, you're going to have to buy it. Go to antsy.com slash shop slash Okay, <clears throat> Just like so. Now we've got to come back and we're going to highlight this sucker. We're going to give it the shadows. We're going to do everything. So let's start with our shadows. We can scrape up some of this uh, purpley mixture that we made our little, our, our, our shadow colors for our clouds out of, right? All of our light is coming from this side, obviously. So we're going to just drop in some of these kind of darker bits of shadow in the little crevices of our mountain, just anywhere you want. I find it's easier sometimes to put our shadows in first, especially for beginners. And then you can go over with your highlights to just sort of play, make them come alive, okay? So again, for our highlights, we're gonna get some of that white, some of that brown, and just sort of mix it up. But again, we're not gonna over mix it. I want it to be different colors, okay? And then we can come in and just drop on these sort of darker, lighter areas. create our mountains to look how we want them to look. And our angles are most important, right? We're, we're kind of pulling down or dragging. Once we get down the bottom, we're pulling to the side, okay? Watch how I use my knife, how I'm holding it, you know, the angles that we're moving. Be mindful of all of that <clears throat> and hold yours the same. Right, we'll pull it down, get some more of that brown out. And as we come around the side, it gets a little darker. And then we'll come down like this on Easter Sunday, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Sticking with us through our technical issues on Easter Sunday. <coughs> I'm going to try something real quick. Hold on. <coughs> Okay, every so often you can take a little bit of your midnight black or your purple mixture or your darker brown, however light yours is, and just come and drop in some of these dark like, crevices, right? It's so hard for the light to reach all the way over here. And the more you put in, the more realistic your mountain's going to look. But don't overdo it, because if you overdo it, you're going to hate me for it. You're going to be like, Josh, I just kept putting on black and black, and then it got to a point where, you know, the whole thing was just way too dark, okay? I know, I've been there before, don't worry about it. You can always scrape over it, you can paint over it again, scrape it all off, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Okay, we're going to take our one inch brush, just because it's easier to sort of handle, and we're going to start pulling this out 
just by dabbing in the colors, right? And then moving, you can see how I'm rotating the brush back and forth like this as we get out towards our little flatter area. Okay, grab that, grabbing these colors, pulling them down. It's the same angle that we painted our shadows with, right? Now we've got this desert dirt down here at the bottom. Swipe over to the side like this, and you get this whole little desert scene very quickly just come to life for you, okay? Now, because it's Easter, let's pretend that it rained in the desert, which very rarely happens around here, but it does sometimes. So let's just go with that. And uh, we're gonna throw in like a little grassy meadow back there, okay? So we're gonna take a little bit of our liquid white on our uh, Bob Ross kind of roundish, the half inch round brush. Take a little bit of green, a little bit of our Lizard, uh, our uh, cad yellow, <laughs> our yellow ochre. We don't even know what color we're painting with today. Then we're gonna come back here and just sort of pop in, same same sort of direction, right? Just pop in this green color. Gonna change it up, put a little bit of green back in here. Because every so often it rains in the desert and you get all these beautiful flowers that come out. With the green, let's put some red flowers in there. Just different places, right? Don't go too crazy. You want these to be these nice, soft, just barely touching the canvas. As it gets closer to us, it gets a little bit darker. Right? Throw some shadowing in back here, just wherever you think you need it. bit more of that yellow ochre, sort of mix in with this green grass. And just like that, I'm going to swipe to the side again, because we want these to be off in the distance. We don't want a whole lot of detail way back there. And we got all these little different, beautiful colors back there in our desert, right? Nice little deserty bloom, bunch of flowers back in there. Just make them real soft by just Dabbing. Dab, right? I'm gonna dab it. Take these, just pull them down, just make this soft, just differences in color back here. That's all we're really looking for. We want a different bit of color. Okay, now we're gonna come back, we're gonna make up more of that mountain mixture, right? The blue, black, and crimson. Throw a little bit of our brown in there. Just gonna mix up this whole big pile. Eventually gonna turn into this dark black color when you're mixing it. All right, scrape it all up, mix it again, scrape it, pull it out, just back and forth until you can't even tell that there's four colors in there. It just looks like one black color, right? I'm gonna come back in like this, and we're gonna decide our next mountain lives a lot closer to us, right? So we're gonna come up here. It's gotta be higher than this one back here, right? I'm gonna come up, just gonna drop down our new mountain in different areas. Back, scrape up some more of that paint. And cover over our little grassy meadow back there. <clears throat> Dropping some dark color down in here. Scrape all this down like that, right? Doesn't have to be uniform. Don't want it all the same amount of black, otherwise it's gonna be too thick. Okay, so we'll come down, maybe this way it comes up over here. And then just like that, we got our own little bit of mountain. Again, we're only worried about what the top edge looks like. Everything else underneath, you can cover or fix. I like mine to have these little like drop downs, right? Little imperfections, so it's not just a straight line that comes down. And then we can take with our one inch brush again, and we're just gonna create a whole new mountain, right? The reason that we add is that when we go to blend it out, we're gonna have differences in color in our, our mountain, right? It's not gonna be all the same black. It's not what we want. We don't want it to be all the same black. All right, come down, comes up over here, maybe it comes down this way. And we're making this one much darker than the other one because 
it's back here in the shadow, right? So when we go to highlight it, we're gonna have much deeper, darker shadows and darker highlights. Okay, I'm gonna come down like this, just drag it out over here to the side, very lightly. Not worried about it too much over here. Just like that. You can take a lot of time, what looks cool is if you uh, bring one of the ridges down from this mountain up here, and you can sort of connect these guys. Just like that. It's the best part about painting is you literally are in charge of what this thing looks like. All right, so if you're like, oh, it would look cool if it was like this, or if it had another little ridge right here that connected to this mountain, or you know, whatever you want it to be is what it's going to be. And that's why we put these darker color, our, our, our little meadow, grassy meadow back in there first, right? Because we want those. It's very hard to go back and kind of fix, fill in that area back there. Okay, we got that. You know what we can even do is take a little bit of that crimson and the blue and just chuck them in down here. We're going to kind of reflect the sky down here, either into our dirt or, you know, the water that may be down here. We can make a little pond out of this stuff. We can do whatever we want. And then we'll have this sort of reflection of the, the sky, just with the blue and the crimson, not over mixing it, just sort of throwing it on there. Blending it out until you get this nice little purple bottom, right? And then we've got this pond down that lives down at the bottom of our, our little bluff right here, right? Okay. Come back in. Now it's time to highlight this sucker. So we can do our low lights here. Get that same black mixture that we made up, right? And just come and just start chucking it in in different places. Don't need a lot because my mountain is very dark anyway. If yours is lighter, then your, you know, your, your low lights will stand out a little bit more than mine. But I like the nice textured bit of mountain for me. So I'm going to just drop in these things. I don't know how well you guys can see them. Put in a couple over here. Just down around the bottom. This side's a little bit lighter. It's going to have the light coming through and hitting over here. But don't worry about that. If we just chuck a couple... A couple little dark shadowy bits in there. When we throw our highlights on, it's going to look really nice. Okay, so with these ones, we do the same brown and white, right? A little bit more brown than white, though. We want it a little bit darker than, you know, the mountain up here. On this side, maybe it comes down like this. You just literally drop it on it until you like the way that it looks, right? A little bit of mountain down in here, holding the knife at the same angle of your canvas, right? So if your canvas is, you know, flat, hold it flat. If it's on an angle, hold it on an angle. You take a little bit of that brighter stuff and just put it up here on the edges of our, of our mountain. Right? That's going to give the effect that the light is trying to reach around and get to the back of this sucker. Just on the edges. Like that. And then we can take the rest of that black mixture that we made, or if you need to make more of the blue and the crimson and the black, and just mix all that in with our brown. And that's going to give us this much darker sort of brown highlight, but it's still going to be lighter than what we have up here. Right? And we're going to pull it down like this. Again, not over mixing the highlights so you have all these different colors as they. Right, a little bit of lighter colors, darker colors. <clears throat> Never make enough. There we go. It's going to be a little more dark. Okay, as we mix all this up, it turns into this brownish, kind of grayish mixture. And we're just going to start dropping it down, dropping it down. Put a little bit of that yellow ochre in there too. And we get down around the side. Okay, we don't have to come all the way down to the bottom of the canvas though. 
don't need that. Then there's a bit of darker shadow in here too. You can throw some of that black on top. Just in different places. So you have what, guys? Differences in color. That's right. Who said that? Do we have any comments? Is anybody watching? Yeah, there's people watching. Okay. You guys just don't want to comment on Easter Sunday? That's fine. Shirley Benson says, very nice. Oh. There we go. <clears throat> All right, we're going to take our one-inch brush. Again, sort of make this same sort of deal that we did up here. Go back and forth, up and down, but at different levels. I don't want it to be straight across. Make this little kind of hazy area down here, right? Which will make it easier to put our, our bushes on. Just like that. Come in, we can take that, mix it up a bit. Swipe it up in the direction that we laid our highlights down. And then poof, we've got this little foggy area down around the bottom here. And I'm going to take another giant bit of crimson, black, and blue. And mix that up because we need to make a bunch of bushes down here at the bottom, okay? Might even need to go back to the paint box and get some more. Which is what's neat about you guys at home. You can go rewind. You can watch it again. And, uh, you know, go back to your paint box. Get enough paint out to sort of finish the painting here. But we want it nice and thick. So we need a giant pile of paint over here, okay? I take that half inch round. Just sort of pop it in. Just like that. Picking up a whole lot of paint inside this brush. And we're going to come up here. We just make these different colored little bushes, right? The best part about this brush is it creates all these little things that would take you ages and ages and ages to try to do if you're going to do it without this brush. I want it to be very thick though, right? You want to have stuff that's sticking off the canvas, which is what's going to give you all that texture. All right, little bushes down here. Bushes come down a little bit further. For anyone who saw that, that Facebook thread inside the Bob Ross group, all you braless ladies, I'm not wearing any pants today, okay? Told you I was going to do it, and I did it. Don't wear no pants. You guys don't wear your bras anywhere. I'm not wearing my pants in my own house. And I can do that. I can do it. Nothing you guys can do. All right. I'm going to bring some of those down here, just like so. And then we're going to come back and sort of decide where our... Got to get the bottom of that canvas there, never got covered. And decide where our bushes live, where our water line is, right? We're going to come back and we're going to just bring it down in different places, okay? Over here, much higher on this side, lower over there, and we're going to swipe to the side. Okay? Take some of these guys, just going to pull the land out a little bit, just so it's easy to. Uh, lay these highlights, lay our, you know, figure out where our water line is, figure out where our dirt's going to be. Come back. Let's see, if you ever start running out of brown, you can take your, your crimson and your greens together and mix those up. Throw some of that red in. You'll make this nice, deep, dark brown color. So we don't have to go to the box to get more brown, right? Look at that color. Whew. That is a pretty bit of color right there. Okay, we're going to take that and we're going to see maybe our land lives up here. All right, remember, we're in the shadow behind this mountain, so it doesn't need to be super thick. Don't want it to be thick. Uh, super bright, sorry. Don't want it to be too bright because we're back in the shadow of this mountain back here. And all we're doing is just dropping down this color for the, uh, the base of our where our dirt lives, right? Everything back here has got to be sitting up on something. So then we can come back in, take a little bit of our yellow ochre, and sort of highlight that by dropping it on. Maybe our cad yellow in there too. By dropping it on in different places, right? And we got this land. That lives back in here. 
this like so. Different angles, back and forth. This side's coming this way, the other side's going the other way. Sort of meeting in the middle back there, right? All right, into our water. Now we can take and get some liquid white onto our knife like this, and then just come back in and just start cutting in our, where our, our shoreline lives, right? Cutting it in, that's what the knife is for. You gotta cut it. Cut that sucker in. Doesn't need to be the same on each side. Doesn't need to look uniform, doesn't need to do anything. What I like to do is take a little bit of that dark, sort of throw it in to kind of right over the top of that white, just so we have a little bit of distinction between our where our shoreline is and then where our water begins, right? Again, you don't always want to have the same colors everywhere. Throw a little bit of dark in over your, your shoreline. I'll give it these little rocks that, you know, take you ages if you want to do it all on your own to try to do that. Now comes the fun part, guys. We've got to decide what color all these bushes are going to be down here, right? Dead last brush. Show you guys what we're doing. We've got our golf bucket, and uh, just helps us clean the brush without having to spray it all over the house like the office, right? Okay. Do we have any suggestions on, you know, which colors we're going to use in order to create these bushes, and make them nice and beautiful? Anybody at all? I love the way that little green and the yellow pops out back there. Fantastic. Just smoke a cigarette in this delay time. <laughs> Doug Hollowell says the shoreline just needs to be level so the water doesn't run off the canvas. <laughs> yeah, right. I feel you. I feel you. Dean says some nice purples and oranges. Allison says bright green. Bright green, purple and orange. I like that. You guys know me. <laughs> Shelly Benson says Elizabeth. Uh, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth and crimp, son. <laughs> crimp, son. Get it. Hey, we had a, a question on uh, one of the Facebook rooms the other day about how we do this, right? I'm not washing the brush in between each color, just sort of wiping it off. Because we're not touching so hard that we're smushing everything, right? Just getting a little bit of liquid white, going into those colors, sort of dabbing it onto the end of the brush, and then we're just going to come up here and just touch. Just touching like that. You don't want to cover up all your dark, right? Otherwise, you have no depth. And you don't want to smush the shape that you created with all that, right? Let's throw those purple ones down. Ooh, look at that. Right, little purple. Always leave some dark down around the bottom as well. Otherwise, you've got no depth, guys. What about this emerald green? Let's throw some of that emerald green up in here. Put over the top of that. It's sort of like a phthalo green, looks like to me. Some of that pink, love the pink, the rose, the magenta. All right, and all we're doing is just literally popping it in. Just so we have this little bit of difference in color. That's all we're really looking for, a bit of color difference. And just like that, we've got this beautiful little, little bit of bush, you know, back behind in the shade of our little mountain over here. It looks really good, you guys. Now we're getting the other one that look kind of cool. Because we threw like a big boulder in here down around the bottom. And we might as well because we have all this extra paint. So then we got a little boulder that lives down here. 
just different shapes. You don't want to make it a triangle, right? You want to have this triangle shaped little deal. Make it round and flat in different areas, comes up, comes over, however you want. And then we can come back, maybe highlight it with that yellow ochre and a little bit of the brown. But of course, leaving, leaving our dark areas in there. You don't need to cover it all the same. You want to have some light and dark, right? We got this little boulder that's sitting down there, kind of popping up out of the water. Take a step back, look at it from where you guys are. Good. I like it. We even bring some of this down. Right, just scrape it off. Come back in, create this darker shadow, right? So our line, our land has just changed the colors a little bit. Doug Hollowell says, put in a huge tree like Bob Ross would. Well, there's really no huge trees out into the desert, though. That's the problem. There we go. Change the shape of our land, right? Scrape off some of that that uh, shoreline that we had, and just sort of change the shape of it, just like that. You just don't want to go too nuts, right? It starts looking really good, and then you put too much, or you cover up too much of your dark, and there's no differences in it anymore. And you lose all of your depth. Yeah, there's really nowhere for a tree to go here. Maybe like a branch, maybe, but again, the, the trees in the desert are not Bob Ross style trees. So good suggestion, but we'll do it on another painting. Sort of leave this one away, like I really like the way this one came out. And uh, it's really good. Now take our knife back in here, and in our darkest areas, we're just gonna scrape in some sticks and twigs, lit back in there, holding up all this stuff, right? Not everywhere. You can have them come straight out of the thing if you want. They don't all have to be at the bottom. Wipe off some of that paint. Doug Hollowell says, okay, then a saguaro cactus. Doug Hollowell. Let's see. Yeah, again, there's really nowhere to put it on this little canvas, on a, on a bigger canvas for sure. On this little thing, there's not a lot of room left. There we go. I don't want to do too many little sticks and twigs in there. All right, let's see. We're going to sign the sucker right down in here, and we're going to call this one done, you guys. If you like this video, if you like some of the techniques that we used in this video today, uh, you know, follow my pages. Go to happylittlelandscapes.com. That will take you to everywhere that I need you to go. From the Amazon store where you can get the, the easel, the canvas, all the paints, all the colors, all the brushes that we use. Uh, to my Etsy store, to the YouTube channel, to Facebook, to everywhere that I am. You guys can find at happylittlelandscapes.com. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed painting this one. It's very similar to the picture that we put up for the live event. So sort of hit our goal and did a good job with this one. So uh, send your guys' paintings in to uh, facebook.com slash happy landscape art. Or if you search at happy landscape art, send me a message of what your painting looked like. Hopefully you guys can, uh, can do one sort of similar to this. And I would love to see them. So throw in our... Little family of birds is the last thing that we're going to do in this painting up here. Just flying through the desert. Every year when it gets to be 115 in Las Vegas, I ask my wife, why do we still live here? So this is us living in the desert for way too long. Right? It starts to fry your brain after a while. So... Again, hope you guys like this painting. It'll be available for sale on Etsy. Go to my Amazon storefront slash Happy Landscape Art, and you'll be able to find, you know, the micro liner brushes, the Bob Ross colors, the Bob Ross liquid white, clear, black, 
all of his paint set, the Magic Fly paints we use, and every other thing that I think you would enjoy or that I wish I had, right? So I'm gonna have to go and get myself a new easel before this thing falls out. Check out my YouTube video on uh, Tuesday coming up. The painting literally falls out of the easel and I have to catch it on video. And I left it in the video. I'm not afraid to show you my bloopers, my, my flips and flops, right? So hope you guys had a good day. Have a, a very happy Easter. And uh, we're going to say goodbye from Las Vegas, everybody. Catch you on the next painting. And uh, always subscribe to my channels, like my pages, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.